All right, so we have one last section to go in uh, chapter 16. And we just covered interference of waves when we have two sources. But when we did that, we talked about two sources, both acting as linear spherical waves. We talked about two sources emitting identical frequencies. Our very last concept that we're going to get into is the concept of beats. And this is when our two frequencies that are being emitted are not identical. So we're still going to get some th things with constructive and destructive interference, but it's not as simple or elegant as um, constructive and destructive interference um, as like a, if I'm at this point versus a different point, right? So before we had, here's a wave, here's another wave, right? If we have that, like, where are we? Right, so beats are a little bit more complex, and that's what we're going to take a look at right now. Now, before you watch this, uh, you should watch, I have a demo video of me playing some saxophone, and then there's also a, another demo video that's way better sound quality than mine, of somebody um, playing with two tuning forks, whereas one of the tuning forks is adjustable. So check those out, you'll get a great um, demo representation of what we're talking about. So what beats are, if I have two waves that are slightly different frequencies, they're going to create not perfectly constructive or destructive interference. So here, right at the beginning here, I have wave one, which is like a, going back to that magenta, and wave two, which is gold. Now, they, there are two waves right at the start, and they start at the exact same time. But as I look... Wave one, the magenta wave, has its own frequency and its own wavelength. There's wave two, which is the yellow wave, has a slightly smaller wavelength, okay? So we know that velocity equals frequency times wavelength. The velocities are the same. So it's got wave two, the gold one, has a slightly smaller wavelength and a, therefore a slightly higher frequency. Now, as we look through many cycles of these waves, there's different things happening on. Now, this picture it does a really great job of visualizing it, but realize that this is happen, This happens in seconds, like within a second. Uh, so what I have right at the start is I have both crests meeting together, and right at the end, I have both troughs meeting together. These will get areas of constructive interference. But here, right in the middle, I have the crest from one wave and the trough from another wave. And that will give me completely destructive interference. So what does that translate to? What does that translate to? If I superimpose both of the waves, they start almost really good being in phase and they end almost really well being in phase. So I have at the start, the superposition is a, a very large amplitude and large amplitude means higher volume. In the middle, my amplitude is zero, which means zero volume. And at the end, I once again have a large amplitude which again means a high volume. So what happens if I were to graph, uh, this is an arbitrary graph, but volume as a function of time, it would go down and back up. And that is this periodic variation of this loud, soft, loud is a beat. Now, one of the things, a, a great, great visual of this, it's really simple. Uh, when you're at, when you're in the turn lane, like let's say you're on, uh, putes turning on to howl and you're waiting for the for the turn signal and um, you're behind another car and you both of you guys have your blinkers going now your blinkers have slightly different um, typically frequencies or different tempos that they blink at and when you first turn your blinker on maybe it's perfectly in sync with the person in front of you but then it'll start to kind of get out of sync and you can listen to your blinker as you watch theirs and it'll be in sync and then it'll slowly get out of sync and then it'll be completely out of sync so it'll be um 
the opposite of yours, and then it'll come back to being in sync. Well, that's beats happening um, just because you have two different frequencies. So that's what we're talking about today. Just a quick little introduction as terms as to what is going on. So what is going on is that the air is oscillating at against your eardrum, but you can't pick out both frequencies. What you actually pick out is the average of the two. So if I'm playing, uh, let's say my frequencies are 340 hertz and 342 hertz, what you actually, so you got, so you got frequency one is 340, frequency two is 342. What you actually hear is neither one of those. The frequency of the oscillation is actually 341 hertz. So you hear an average of the two. Now, the other thing you hear is the loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, loud. And every loud to soft to loud is one beat. And the frequency of the beats, which is the number of loud, soft, louds every second, is based on the difference of the two frequencies. So going back to my frequency one, frequency two, there is a difference of two hertz. That means every second I am going to hear two loud, soft, loud um, variations. So if I think about that, it'd be wah, 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 maybe a little slower than that. Um, but that's going to be the loud, soft, loud. And that's what we talked about in that um, demo. And that's what um, we hear when things are not perfectly in tune with each other. Now, I have a, uh, another demo that's called the pendulum wave. Uh, this is similar to um, the concept of the blinker. All of these pendulums in this picture that you can see, that's my dog shaking himself, all have different length strings. Um, so remember that the period of a pendulum is of course two pi times the square root of L over G. So the longer the string, the longer the period, the slower it moves back and forth. So as I, I'll, I'll post a video of this as well, but I'll have a bar and I push all of the pendulum pendulums at the same time out of the way and then I release them. And they start as going back and forth simultaneously, but then they slowly get out of phase. At one point they will be perfectly out of phase. And then again, they'll kind of come back together and then for one swing they'll be back directly being back in in phase. So it's this combination of in phase, out of phase, in phase, constructive, destructive, constructive interference. So I'll post a video so you can check out that as well. Uh, otherwise, I do that in class. Um, in the demo, uh, the beat demo, again, I played two instruments, uh, or I, I did an instrument and a doctor beat. Um, it's a lot easier when you have the same volume of sound as well as the same timbre of sound, um, but we can uh, play different notes, we can play out of tune with each other, and the beats can sound very pleasant to our ear. They could be non-existent if we're playing in unison, or they can sound very tense or wrong, depending on what those beat frequencies are. So when I have things like uh, what's called a leading tone. So uh, I'll give you a, 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 a scale, for example. Now, many of you might not know this because uh, you're not musically inclined, but a G major scale is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. This F sharp creates a lot of tense, a lot of tension in the note. And that is therefore called a leading tone because it leads you into wanting to resolve from that F sharp back into that G. And this is something that composers have been using for hundreds of years to help you want that resolution. It creates this discord which wants you to get to the next note and that is why it's called a leading tone. So with a scale, we have whole a whole interval, a whole interval, a half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And that last half step really gets you into resolving that um, into, a, uh, into a whole sound. Now, uh, chord structure works the same way. Um, and that's, that's all about 
um, going away from, from chord to chord, playing a series of notes. Um, if you ever get into music theory, there's something called four-part writing, and there's all these different rules about how you write for four parts, of course, being a, a bass, baritone, alto, and tenor, or alto soprano. Um, so that four part writing follows these rules, but it highlights some of these chord structures. So like going from a one chord to a four chord to a five chord back to a one chord, there are rules in how you can go from one chord to the next. And that is the rules of music essentially. And that's utilizing these good feelings and eliminating the wrong feelings, but also using this, this tension, uh, created by that. So, um, if we're ever back in class, I can I can play this on piano and give you guys some basic chord structure uh, if my three semesters of piano is still somewhere rattling around in my brain. So here's a quick check. Uh, thinking about Doppler shift, also thinking about um, beats. You're hearing two beats per second when two sound sources, both at rest, play simultaneously. But we notice that if source one moves towards us, well, if source one moves towards us, that'll increase the frequency because of the Doppler effect. Well, source one remains at rest. Source one is 500 hertz. So if we were hearing, um, we were hearing two beats. So if source one is 500 hertz, source two was either 502 or it was 498 because the beat frequency is based on the difference in the two frequencies. So according to the Doppler shift, if source two is 498 and moves towards me, that's gonna increase the frequency. So that'll actually, if I play it right, will get me to um, no beats. So that's why 498 hertz is the frequency of the second source. With that, we are done with unit six. And reminder, we covered a lot in unit six. We started off with simple harmonic motion. We talked about pendulums, we talked about oscillators we went into the more of the concept of waves we talked about light and sound waves we talked about what a wave is and then we got into this concept of interference um, and superposition so three distinct superposition three distinct chunks of this unit um, but they all work together everything is based on this concept of simple harmonic motion and then that builds us into what is a wave, which builds us into these concepts and consequences of constructive and destructive interference. And that actually caps off this unit. Now our last unit for physics one gets into the concepts of something completely different, which is electrostatics and DC circuits. And uh, we'll be taking a look at that in the next unit.